Hello, it is always a pleasure to know that you're watching New Vision TV's Pearl of Africa Diaries with me, your pal guide, Ruthie Naseje. And today's adventure is going to be quite different. It's not going to be the usual national parks that I take you to, the usual mountains, the usual rivers. Today, it is the animals that are found in those places. And I start with the Ugandan cob. You know, the Ugandan cob features on the coat of arms, which represents the tourism potential of Uganda. The cobs are herbivorous and come from the family of Bovide. Trust me, here in Uganda, you'll find the cob in any national park you would wish to go to, be it Queen Elizabeth, Kidepo, Lake Mburu National Park, anywhere, you'll find the Ugandan cob. So in this episode, we look at the Ugandan cob. <laughs> The Ugandan cob is one of the three types of antelopes. The other two antelope types are Lechwe and Topi. When you clearly examine these three, you realize they are different. But if it's your first time to see them, they look very alike. The Ugandan cob is largely concentrated in the sub-Saharan Africa countries which are South Sudan, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Ethiopia. So Korea, Africana, Akasha, a big tree on my side, that's Akasha Sepiriana with long white front. The Ugandan cob is so dear to Ugandans. This is why it is even featured on the Uganda coat of arms. Now besides the representation of the tourism potential of Uganda, the cob also represents the abundance of wildlife in the country. And this is very true. Uganda is one stop center for wildlife, be it plants or animals. That male ahead of us is enjoying acacia hokai. Uh, as you know, Lake Mburu is dominated by much of acacia trees. We have varieties here, about five species. You could differentiate the Ugandan cob from the other two antelopes by looking at some of its unique features. The Ugandan cob is reddish brown, its horns are ridged and curved. The neck, eyes, mouth, and the belly are partly white. The males are slightly different from the females. They are more reddish brown with bold black stripes fronting their legs. The young cobs don't have horns. While in Uganda, you can find the Ugandan cob from all the national parks. Some of these include Queen Elizabeth National Park, Kidepo Valley National Park, among others. Uganda Wildlife Education Center also keeps some under captivity. These are basically for conservation and educational purposes. And without an agent to transport nitrogen, the cobs basically prefer low-lying flats or gently rolling areas with short and green pastures. They feed on tender grass which keeps the plains in a state of regrowth, allowing new grass to grow. At 18, a male cob is considered mature to bear calves. For a female cob, it is 13 months. However, these animals can live up to 17 years or even more if kept under captivity. For the cubs, gestation is about eight months and their calves come out of hiding after six weeks. The cubs are some of the most endangered animals in the wild. This makes the young ones an easy target for the predators. Cubs are an important food source for any larger predators, especially the cheetahs the lions, the hyenas, the African wild dogs, and sometimes the larger snakes. But every animal has a defensive mechanism. When they are pursued by predators, they seek refuge in the nearest water body. Here is the scientific classification of the cob. Common name, Uganda Cob, Kingdom, Animalia, Phylum, Chodata, 
class, mammalia, order, Archaeodacta, family, bovide, genus species, Cobus, a native African name, or Cob Thomas, a scientific explorer. It is quite interesting getting to know these animals. We get to know their lifespan, what they feed on, among other features. So join me in our next episode as we feature yet another interesting animal here on New Vision TV's Pile of Africa Diaries, which is our home of adventures. So till next time, I am Ruth Naseje.